my next question, the Caleb Stearns fight, which I'm sure you get asked about a lot, but I kind of have, I'm just wondering this because that fight was funny, obviously. I mean, for people that don't know, he, he backpedaled the whole time. He ran from you. It was the weirdest. I've never seen anybody do that in a fight. Did you ever find out years down the road or, or anything from anybody that knew him or trained with him or even from him, what was going on with that? Well, it's to me that the answer is pretty simple. Uh, so there's a, there's a long story involved with this one as well, of course. <laughs> so my previous fight was with Rich Franklin where I get brutally knocked out. Well, three months later, my back is hurting so much that I can't even pick up my little girl, who's I think five at the time. And I end up getting this uh, uh, spinal fusion, an XLIF, extreme lateral inner body fusion, that everybody said, if you get back surgery, your career is over. You'll never fight again. Forget about ever picking up your little girl again. Pat Militich famously told me, live with the pain, don't get surgery. Well, I opted to go ahead and get the surgery, and it was a brutal recovery. It was, it was tough to go from world championship caliber, conditioning, strength, to somebody then suffering from a debilitating back injury to getting this big surgery and then recovering to an average person and then striving to go beyond that into elite athlete status. So I, 22 months is when my, my comeback fight was. And in preparation for that, I called up Joe Silva from the UFC and I said, all right, nobody thought it was possible. I'm ready to fight again. I want Caleb Starnes. And he said, that'll be a good fight. I'll call up Caleb. <clears throat> Joe calls me back and he says, yeah, Caleb won't take the fight. He says, you're not worthy to fight him because you just lost your title fight and he just won his random fight. And I think it was Chris Lieben that he'd be in a very controversial decision. And that was the main reason why I called him out. I wanted to get some vengeance for Lieben. So Joe Silva tells me, we want you to fight Pete Sell in a rematch. And, and our first fight was stopped. Uh, you could say quickly. I, I think once I was on top of him, I wasn't going to hit him once and then stop. I would have pounded him out. But Pete had been very vocal that it was a quick stoppage and he wanted a rematch. So when Joe told me this, I said, all right, I'll fight Pete in a rematch. It's going to be a hell of a fight because he's been training the past two years. He's been on a win streak. He's got the champ, Matt Serra, in his corner. But I'll beat him. And then after that, I want to fight Caleb Starnes and I'm going to end his fucking career. <laughs> and so <clears throat> I fight Pete Sell and it is a brutal war. He drops yeah. me in the second. I knock him out in the third. It was a great fight. I remember that one. Uh, fight of the night, third best fight of the year, according to the UFC rankings. Knockout of the night on my behalf, thankfully, which was good because I was completely broke. Uh, and then I had some other random injuries. I had to recover from that. And then I took a golf club to the face at a picnic it wasn't an angry thing it was a stupid <laughs> thing uh so i had an orbital floor fracture that had to get recovered so i had some time off there and then joe silva calls me and says so you want you still want caleb yeah all right i'm gonna make him fight you and so this whole way up to this fight i just kept envisioning we walk out to the ring i'm gonna get booed he's gonna get cheered because he's canadian we're fighting in montreal but I'm going to win the crowd over because I'm the only real fighter in the ring. What people didn't realize about Caleb is he's a bully. He's tall. He's long. He does really well when he's moving forward. But if you keep him backpedaling, he falls apart. He's the kind of guy that will look for an excuse. And so my game plan was I'm going to stay in his face the whole time. I'm going to shut down his game. And then I'm going to be the winner. And after that, I'm going to give the Rocky four speech in Rockies <laughs> in Russia. And so, and that's exactly how the fight went down. The, the first round, he was a little more aggressive. I thought he was going to shoot for more takedowns, but my hips are really heavy. I shut him down there pretty good. Uh, and then I just kept chasing him. And at the 10 second bell in the third round, I did my famous <laughs> rock hammer punch. And, and the whole reason behind that was, I'd been at other fights where somebody wasn't engaging. It was Ivan Solovary and Nate Marquardt. And we fought on the same card on, I, I want to say, Ultimate Fight Night 1, which was hilarious because I fight. That was an I fought Pete Sell. 
and then I'm going out sitting in the crowd and I'm sitting right behind Tim Sylvia. And I overhear Tim say, finally, the main event, Mark Hart and Solivary, finally, we get to see some real fighters going at it. <laughs> and I went, Tim, come on, man. He's like, oh, no, 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 not you, Nate. <laughs> and then their fight was horrific. It was terrible. Yeah. Solivary did not show up that night. He was backing away the whole time. Mark Hart got angry, couldn't make anything happen. So the entire crowd soured. They were all upset when they left. And so as we're getting to the end of the third, I thought to myself, you know, I can't give you the fight you wanted to see, but even more than that, you want a memory. You want something to talk about in the years to come. That I can give you. Yeah. And, and I did my, my rock hammer punch. <laughs> and when, there, when Kenny Florian was interviewing me at the end of the fight, I took the microphone and I said, you know, when I walked out, everybody here was booing me, and I, you know, I don't know how I felt about that. And you cheered for Caleb as he was walking out. But as the fight went along, you all started cheering for me. So I figured if you can change and I can change, anybody can change the Rocky Four speech. Yeah. And it, it just – it all came together. And to a short answer to your question was, uh, Caleb, he's just got the bully fighting style. Yeah. And I, I never trash-talked him afterwards because, man, it is so stressful. Going and fighting in a cage in, in that arena, I believe it was 22,000 people. And you're training for three or four months. You may work three days a year, two days a year. All the rest of your time is spent preparing for that. And you have an off night, and that's supposed to define you for the rest of your life. Man, it is what it is. Uh, he got cut from the UFC, uh, nah. which – you know, that was the goal from the outset. <laughs> you, you talk trash to me, I'm going to change your life. But I, I never wanted to, to disrespect him after our business was done in the 